Всем привет! Давайте пока начнем. В любом случае, я буду делать видеозапись, и не знаю, получится отправить потом или нет. Ну вот. Сегодня будет вебинар про школу международную UWC, в которую поступила на полный грант моя подруга. Вот. И сегодня она будет рассказывать, как можно получить грант вообще о самой школе, о дипломной программе IB и так далее. Так что вот в основном как бы это делаем для всего СНГ. Но, поступи... Но поступало очень много вопросов насчет именно Казахстана. Я посмотрела, и все-таки там набор открыт на эту программу, но максимум 40% на стипендии. Вот. Если будут какие-то вопросы, задавайте потом в конце. Можете включать в конце микрофоны. Uh, okay, hello everybody. My name is Esta. Uh, let me first introduce myself. Uh, as I said, my name is Esta, and my surname is Avshar. I am from Turkey, and I am 17 years old. This year, I got into UWC, United World College, and I will be talking about the whole process of getting in, and also a little bit uh, about the IB diploma. Uh, let me share my. Um, presentation with you now. I don't know if you can see it. Uh, is it okay right now? Yes? Okay, thank you. Um, now I will start doing my presentation. At the same time, I'm also admitting people into the uh, Sorry for a few interruptions. So let me first uh, talk a little bit about UWC uh, before I talk about the application. What is UWC? So UWC, UWC is a global movement um, that makes education a force to unite people, nations, and cultures for a sustainable future and peace. So basically, there are national committees all around the world. Uh, as far as I know, over 180 countries have national committees all around the world, including Kazakhstan, Turkey, Turkey, uh, Germany, or any country you may think of. There are uh, national committees. There is also a global selection. But you go that way. If you apply through the global uh, selection committee, then you do not get scholarships. Uh, so in order to get scholarships, uh, you have to apply through your own national committee. So that is what I did. Each year, uh, your own national committee around October releases their um, releases the uh, places for students in each country. There are 18 schools around the world. And when you apply, your national committee uh, evaluates your application. And there are a few other steps that you need to take in order to get in. And I will be talking more about that. And study in a school where everyone is from a different country, a different background. And at UWC is also, they use the IB, International Baccalaureate, as the diploma program and as the curriculum that is taught. So basically, that is what UWC is. And let me talk a little bit about the application process. I will be talking about my own country's national varies according to each country for example it might be different for um it might be different for uh is my screen can you right now is it okay yes yes okay okay thank you uh so let me talk about the application process as i said it changes for every country for example the uh process of getting into uwc for turkey uh, you send a written application online. You fill out the application form, just like how you apply to the, last United States, the colleges in the United States. And then according to that application, if they like your application, they accept you. And then uh, after that, you uh, get tested. You get uh, assessed 
based on your knowledge in your school classes. Uh, we call that an academic exam. And then after you take the exam, if you get a high score, then you get invited to an interview. That interview is usually held online. Uh, mine was with the board members. There were two other board members uh, from my national committee, and they basically asked me about politics uh, of my own country. They also asked me about the dorm life and the school life as well. Also, they asked questions about my written application. And there's also a final day. I will be getting into more detail uh, about each one. So for the written application, I will say that they ask just the basics, your school, your name, your, for example, your family number, your, your family members, ages, names, uh, occupations, etc. That those are your backgrounds. They also ask for transcripts. Uh, they also ask for yours at school. Uh, as I said, it will vary according, uh, based on your country. For example, mine was, so we get graded out of hundred and they were asking for at least a 70, uh, 70 percent out of hundred to even evaluate your application. And in, inside the written application, you also write some essays, just like in the United States, uh, applications, uh, the essay topics usually change every single year, but this year, for example, I got asked, they uh, basically a prompt, gave me a prompt about a historical event that I would like to witness. So I wrote an essay about that and there are like six or seven essays uh, depending on the year again. And you also film a video of yourself. They give you a prompt. For example, this year they asked me to write a letter to my uh, room, to, to my imaginary roommate. And they just want to see what kind of a person you are through these essays and that video. Um, and then if they like your application, then they invite you to the academic exam through your um, email through your email address and then uh so in the academic exam for my country this was in the steps because uh there aren't there are some countries who do not have this step in their application process because the application the applications and the ad admissions are too competitive in turkey because a lot of people every single year apply and there are very limited uh places uh, there is the step called academic exam. It might not be, uh, in your country, it might not, be, but, uh, for the basics, the academic exam, uh, there was maths, there was, um, Turkish language and literature. There was, there was English language and literature. There was also a general knowledge, which basically is to assess your knowledge on general information regarding the whole world. Um, so after getting a good score, which this, like checking out this exam, which usually takes around two weeks, the whole application process actually takes around two months to three months because of the earthquake that happened this year in Turkey. Uh, my interview paid, uh, around a month. So it got delayed to a month later. So that's why I, um, usual but yeah it usually takes around three to two, two to three months and uh the online interview uh again if you pass the academic exam then you get invited to the online interview process and usually in the online interview uh there are board members from the committee of uwc and uwc committee is basically composed of uwc graduates uh who graduated UWC um, in the past and there were three other people uh, from uh, the board on in my online interview and they basically asked me about the political uh, state of my country for example I got I got asked about the Armenian and Turkish conflict I got asked about the life in 
dormitory, you know, they asked me a question like uh, they told me that uh, what would you do if your roommate was loudly listening to music? How would you react? They just asked me that and they expected me to answer it. But um, I think that like in the end, what matters the most is how you answer the question. You shouldn't be aggressive and you should be uniting. That is the, all they ask for. They also look for confident people, but being all overconfident also ru ruins the whole process as well. So being balanced uh, could be the advice that I would give you guys. Yeah. Also, uh, the, there is a finalist day. Uh, so the finalist day took place in Istanbul. Uh, I flew down. I flew to Istanbul to participate to this uh, activity. We also call this the activity day. So basically they gathered the last 20 finalists all across the Turkey to Istanbul to a place. And in, in that place, there were board members from the committee. There was also a psychology expert and they basically gave us these whole like uh, activities that we needed to complete and they watched us the whole day. They just wanted to see how we acted in different situations. It, they just wanted to see whether we were able to like take the initiative and whether we were able to lead the whole group. They divided us into groups uh, and each in each activity they divide us, divided us into different groups. And for example, one of the um, one of the missions was, as far as I remember, it was like a debate regarding uh, a construction of um, a f construction of a company in a village. That was one of the missions, and we had to basically create a debate scene surrounding that topic in different groups. They also wanted us to like, they also gave us different objects and they wanted to like, they wanted us to come up with a choreography and a song in like, I don't know, 30 minutes. And we had to do that in a group. So uh, what they wanted to see from us was that how we acted in these situations and whether we were able to lead and if we gave others the space to talk as well. I think it is really important to realize that we are not the only ones there. So they also wanted to see that if we were respecting others. And um, so those were those were the steps uh, of getting into UWC for my country. And it will, uh, mo I think, I believe it will be similar for you as well. Um, uh, as I said, a few things might change, but th this, these are the basics. Uh, after the finalist day, they again let you know through email whether you get in or not. Uh, this year, they wanted to see our financial situation and they placed us according to our financial situations because every place uh, at different UWC schools is offered um, with different scholarships. Uh, there are partial scholarships. There's also a full scholarship. So uh, they wanted our financial situations before they um, placed us to a school, registered to a school, accepted to a school, whatever you call it. Um, so I will show you the schools now, and then I will talk about my school a bit more. Um, also, there is IB as well, but yeah. Uh, before I talk about the UWC schools, I also want to mention uh, what UWC has to offer to us. Uh, so, as I said, it is an international environment where you will be able to meet people from different backgrounds and from different cultures and different countries. So, I think really will gain the information that you would probably gain in 10 years in such a short amount of time, in two years. So yeah, that is a very uh, good con pro of UWC. 
Also, UWC uh, offers help and guidance for colleges as well as the necessities such as uh, the SAT language proficiency tests. Uh, the Duolingo test is basically free to UWC students, college counselors. There, there are uh, at every UWC you will find a few college counselors that will help you get prepped for your university life uh, and for your university applications. And I also want to mention the Davis Scholarship. So the Davis Scholarship is offered to UWC graduates, uh, people who graduate from the UWC schools. And if you graduate from any of UW, any of the UWC schools, then you uh, also get to go to UWC. You, you also get to go to the universities in the United States for free uh, if you get into those schools. If you apply and if you get in, then you get the chance to attend that school for free. And there is a list of school there. There's a list of schools in their websites. And if you get into one of those schools, then you basically study there on a full scholarship. And among those schools, there is Harvard, Yale, New York University, and other prestigious universities. Uh, UWC also offer UWCs also offer a ver variety of activities for students to develop themselves outside of classes. Uh, as a part of the IB system, also there are many community service opportunities. Uh, I would like to mention that at every UWC, you can create your own club. There is a full support system there. You just need to tell the administration of at the administration office that you want to create this club and they just let you do it and there are many extracurricular uh opportunities at every uwc such as immune clubs debate clubs uh science clubs uh so on and so forth and it is just way easier to do those things at uwc uh so as i said there are 18 schools around the world and they are in very, very different uh, places. Uh, so, for example, there is a UWC in India, there is a UWC in Hong Kong, in Japan, in uh, the United States of America, in Canada, in Costa Rica, in Germany, uh, in, South, in Southern Africa, in East Africa, uh, in the Netherlands, um, in, in, you know, in the United Kingdom, in Norway, so on and so forth. There are 18 schools. And uh, again, you, uh, for my case, I didn't get to choose the school that I wanted to go. So bear that in mind. If there's a school that you don't want to go, you might want to consider applying to UWC again. I think that the point of this experience that online environment, as well as to get prepped for the next chapters of your life. So I don't think it really matters where you go. You might, uh, we actually were able to pick a few schools to basically express our preference, but I don't think they took that into consideration because I didn't get into the school that I had wanted to. Uh, uh, oh, oh, sorry, just, uh, at every UWC school, uh, the IB diploma is offered to students and you also get the option to not study the IB diploma, but you can study the IB classes. So taking IB classes and studying the IBDP is, uh, are different. Um, so let me talk about a little bit about the IB curriculum. So the International Baccalaureate Organization offers four high quality and challenging educational programs for a worldwide community of schools aiming to create a better and more peaceful world. And usually the IB curriculum is very expensive, uh, including in my country, it is very ex expensive too. Uh, someone's raising their hand. Yes, I'm sorry, your screen is freezed. I mean, is it freezed? Is it freezed? Uh, yes. Can you see it now? Let me just. No, share. it's okay. It's okay. Okay, maybe you have, you have maybe problems problem. with internet connection. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe just try to get out of the meeting and get in again. Is the problem solved right now? Okay, I will go on now. Okay, I think she is trying to get in again. I see everything. Okay. Then I will keep going. Just keep going. Uh, uh, the IB curriculum uh, that I was talking about, at every UWC, the IB curriculum is offered. And at some UWCs, the MYP and the PYP program is offered. Uh, for example, for instance, in my school at UWC East Africa, the MYP and PYP program to students aged between 11 to 16, as well as 3 to 12, uh, they are offered to students as well and usually people who come from different countries and live in in Tanzania attend to MYP and PYP uh, programs for but for the IBDP program usually uh, people from different countries uh, who do not reside in Tanzania uh, attend uh, so there are six groups in IBDP diploma and every school basically offers different classes uh, is different uh, groups. For example, in studies in language and literature, there are usually different languages. In my school, uh, there is English B, English A. You can take these classes in HL and SL. Uh, so. For us, we can take three SL classes, standard level, and three A classes, higher level. And the difference between these, uh, the difference between HL and SL is basically the workload and the hours you spend per week. For example, for as far as I know, SL, you spend 150 hours per class, and for uh, HL, you spend 240 hours per class. Also, there is an additional paper if you take the HL option for a class. Uh, at the end of two years, you take your IB finals. And for those finals, uh, there is an additional paper if you take the HL option. And you have to take three HLs and three SLs in order to obtain the IB diploma. Uh, so as I said, studies in literature, uh, individuals and societies, basically humanity subjects, mathematics, uh, arts, sciences, language acquisition. So uh, in studies in language and literature, there is English A, English B, also the classes your school offers to you. Uh, for example, in my school, there is Swahili, there is German, you may pick one of those uh, individuals and societies. In my school, there is economics, business management, uh, history, geography, and so on and so forth. There are many classes at my school that I don't remember. In mathematics, there, there are two options, math AA applications and math AI. It's a different version of math. I don't exactly remember now, but one is more focused on numbers and the other is more focused on theories and you uh for my case i will be choosing the aa option the application option because i am considering studying engineering in university and for me to do that i have to pick uh math aa uh when you're choosing your ib classes you have to pick you have to bear your university uh you also have to consider what you want to study in the university as well, because each university has different requirements for you to fill, fulfill uh, for the IB curriculum. So bear that in mind when you're picking your classes. So the arts, uh, again, there are many options, theater, uh, music, film, uh, arts, I mean, so on and so forth. I am not really interested in arts, so I don't really know. Uh, the one thing that I know is that you don't have to pick an art subject and instead you can just choose 
another subject from uh, the other groups, the other five groups. There are six groups and you have to pick uh, six subjects and you do not own, there's an exception for the arts group. You do not have to pick one, uh, you do not have to pick an art subject if you do not want to. In sciences, there is physics, there is biology, there is chemistry, there is uh, environmental sciences, um, biology, physics. I don't know if I counted them, but yeah, just the basics. And for the language acquisition, it will change according to your own school. In my school, there is French and Spanish. I will be taking Spanish, for example. And you also can get, uh, you also can take self-taught, the self-taught option. So in the self-taught option, you do study your own language uh, in your, at your own pace. You do not, you have, do a not have a teacher and you just and study you just on your own. Uh, so these are the basics regarding the IB curriculum. It's a very rigorous curriculum that is very demanding. Uh, you have to write a lot of essays, do a lot of research. There is an extended essay. There is like EAs, EEs. I don't exactly know right now because I haven't uh, chosen the classes yet. But yeah, these are the basics. So let me talk a little bit about my own uh, school. I'll be attending UWC East Africa on a full scholarship. Uh, there were five available spots in my for my country for the Turkish National Committee. There was Armenia, there was East Africa, there was, as far as I remember, India, there was the United States. And only two of those uh, options were uh, fully funded. And one of those options was East Africa and I got selected for the uh, full scholarship option. I won a $60,000 scholarship to attend there and I will be studying the IB diploma at UWC East Africa. And UWC East Africa is the last UWC school to attend UWC. And there are about 660 students on two campuses. So the thing is UWC East Africa is special because there are two campuses, one in Moshi and one in Arusha. They are the same school but operating in different campuses. Uh, there is also, as I said, the PYP, also the NYP program uh, at UWC East Africa. And that these, uh, I mean, I am done now. Those were all I wanted to mention. Thank you for listening. If you have anything to ask, feel free to ask me, do not hesitate. You can just uh, unmute yourself or write your question in the chat box. Thank you. Uh, you can ask, someone's raising their hands. Oh, thank you. Um, hello, first of all, I really wanna thank you. Oh, it's 